The other thing you may wish to do is export your results. Now this is fairly simple on Scopus. You'll tick the lines that you wish to save. It can be all of them. You'll see at the very top of the list you've got an all checkbox. And then you may choose to save them to a list within your account on Scopus. Or more likely, you'll choose to export them. You'll find the export option in the header of the results section. And if you click on the little downwards arrow, that will pop up with a screen that gives you your export options. Firstly, you'll select what type of file you want to export. And I would suggest in most cases, the RIS or RIS format is the most useful. Alternatively, the CSV will get you the records within Excel. The other formats have use, but I have to say RIS is probably the most commonly used among programs that you're likely to want to upload the results into. The other element you can customise is exactly which fields are included in the downloaded records. You can see I've got the citation information and the references, but nothing else. If I was screening, I would certainly include the abstract and keywords line as well. And it may be that other elements are also of interest, but you can pick and choose here what's most relevant for you. Once you've done that, all you would do is click the export button and that will then trigger the download for you. So those are the key functions within Scopus. But before we finish the video, I want just to show you a few of the extra things you can do. Now you may have noticed that on the results screen, you get a column that tells you how many papers have cited each of the results you've got. So in this first example, we can see 75 papers have cited the parent-based treatment, etc. result that we have on the screen. If we click into the paper's record, we're able to see on the right hand side of the page a list of all of the documents that came later and which cited this paper. Incredibly helpful and you'll see they're just the most recent on the screen but there's a view all 75 citing documents at the bottom of the list so you could pull the whole list up. Scopus also gives you a list of related documents. So this is based on Scopus's own metadata and its users behaviours this will be a much longer list, often though you find useful bits in here. And not forgetting, you also get a list of papers that are referenced within the paper you're looking at. And you can quickly click through to any of these. You're also able to look at the authors if you want to see what else they've published. So if I click on the lead author, we can see other documents. And if I pull up their full profile, I'll be able to not only see other documents they've published, but also the total of papers that have cited them. I can see who they've written with most often, which topics their papers are most often tagged under in Scopus. And in fact, from the topics page, I can pull up an overview of that topic area, which tells me the most representative in Scopus's view papers on that area, the authors who have the most papers attached to that keyword, you can also see the words that are used most commonly in records of papers that are tagged with this keyword, which can be great for generating new terms when you're running your search.